Okay, um, let's, uh, next topic is moment of inertia for us in uh, rotation chapter. Moment of inertia we saw came uh, very naturally when we tried to uh, look at angular momentum um, property, right? So when we look at angular momentum, L had some inertia-like property and some angular velocity. And we found that if a particle is going in a circle, then moment of inertia is just mass times the radius square of the circle. So that's, a, um, that's our building block. There's a very fundamental definition. So the basic definition is something is going in a circle. So if I know this particle is going in this circle, so this particle of mass m, and its motion is restricted to this circle. So when we rotate, different particles, different part of the body go in different circles, right? So we had the example of dumbbell. When, when I was rotating the dumbbell about, about the axis that way, this guy is going in this circle, and this guy is going in some circle. <coughs> uh, if you look at anything that's rotating, you, you'll notice that uh, different parts go in different circles. So if I have a part uh, of mass m that going in a circle radius r, then, then the moment of inertia, which is given the symbol i, um, is just m times r squared. If uh, <coughs> if I have two of two bodies, say say if I have a dumbbell, uh, when I had a dumbbell like this, and this was uh, this was going in 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 this circle, and this was going in this circle, but my body was this. This is my stuff made of two masses, m1 and m2, and so these are the two bodies in my system, and they're going in different circles. So radius r, I mean this, this was m2, this was m1 in my example, this called r2, this one is r1. Then there will be moment inertia of that, and moment inertia of that, and about this axis. So you see, if you have one body, and the axis is coming out like that, so there's information about axis when we're talking about moment inertia. So this one is axis through uh, about axis through the center and perpendicular to circle circle area. So here the axis of rotation. If you think about this rotation, you will say axis is this way and this thing is a rotating. You might say, you know, I have a stone and uh, I have a thread that's tied to the stone and I'm kind of spinning the stone around in circles. So that's an example like that and the thread is mass zero. Over here, you have a dumbbell different going in different circle and uh, so there's an axis very clear here. Over there may not be so clear but here you can say, yep, yeah, there is axis. So we'll say about this axis, I about this axis. So axis are always perpendicular to the circle in its going. That's very important to uh, realize. The axis are always perpendicular to the area in which it's going. And so you will have one contribution from this guy, and then another contribution from that guy. In a sense, it's kind of capturing the geometry of the rotation, right? The further out something is, if you look at this, further out, it's got more, it, uh, suppose r was two times, right? Then uh, if r1 was two times the r2, it's going to be four times there because the square, right? So the, this radius is actually uh, making a big impact in how big a moment of inertia, how much an impact something has in the uh, inertia of rotation. So, so if I had a, uh, 
if I double the radius, the same the mass, if I double the radius, uh, if double r will mean quadruple i. So it's actually the inertia here, the how far away from the axis the body is moving has much bigger impact. So in here, these two masses may be equal to each other, but they don't have equal moment of inertia for this axis which is a little bit uh, not going through the center point. So the circles are moving in different circles. So this, this may be considerably more than that car. Okay, um, what if I have something continuous? For instance, we, um, we have a bar. Suppose I have a bar. Say you have a door and this is a hinge around here and you're looking from the top and this is the entire door which is modeled as a bar and axis is here coming out like that and this thing is so you might say it's like that and this whole thing is rotating about this I, I might rotate my arm like that for instance so the axis is here axis is uh, I don't want to ruin my coat axis is that way and it's I'm rotating like that, right? So I, I might be rotating like that. So, so the axis is the edge, and I've got some length, and it's got some mass, but the mass is kind of distributed uh, along this, right? Now, uh, you will see in the book if you go to uh, if you go to uh, www.physicsbootcamp. Dot org. If you go there, you will see that I, uh, you can find a formula for this, and that's I about this axis, axis at, at one end. I about axis at one end. The formula that comes out is one over three times mass times L square. This is a, uh, uh, quite a few steps I have to do the calculation, but you can show this systematically starting from uh, modeling your bar by its little pieces. So you can divide the bar into n pieces and this model just turns the bar into, a, not a bar at all, just turns into uh, each one, like this one over here, this this one over here, this one over here. So it turns into a mass problem. So there will be this guy goes in this circle, this guy in this circle, this guy goes in this circle, this guy goes in a bigger circle. So each one I can actually add up. Turns out this addition for this problem is doable algebraically. You don't even need calculus to do it. And you can do that algebraically, and you can show that this is one third m l square. Uh, I am uh, going to give you some more formulas now, because moment of inertia for different shapes and about different axes turn out to be very different. Uh, some of the formulas that um, you can derive uh, if you have calculus, uh, and you can check in your uh, any physics book, it will be derived. Uh, I'll be posting them in, in the boot camp later, but right now it's not there uh, but because it, they're very standard. Another one that you can get is, suppose I had a bar. Suppose I look at all the arm, but I'm, I'm not only really rotating this part, but also rotating this part. You know, like I'm doing both, you know. So I'm rotating from both parts. So, so if I were to have the bar, but axis was in the middle, it's like that. If axis, not this axis, but this axis. So this is axis in the middle coming out. In the middle. 
So this whole thing, this was going this way and this was going this way. So this is not right in a way because I just have one way of doing it. Uh, if this was also going back, well, this was coming like that. So that's, you have to take off my arm and <laughs> pin, put a pin over here. So you have a bar where both end of the bar is going around this. And so if you, uh, so if X is not here, you can do exactly the same kind of stuff, but actually um, when you do it, uh, this summation is a little bit different. And so this I of the bar, I of bar, so it doesn't have one formula. This is about this axis. If I call it axis A here, and you can call it axis B, about axis B, that's actually not one third, but you can uh, you can see that masses here are quite far apart, right? far away, all the way to the L. From this axis, the furthest mass is L over two and L over two, right? There's, there, there are no masses further from L over two. Here, some masses are half the masses are further away from L over two. So this is more than what you would get over here, and it's 1 over 12 ml squared. Interesting, right? Because the distance, remember, the distance from the axis has a very uh, strong influence on how much moment energy you get. So these factors here capturing the how the masses are distributed. Here the masses are distributed go beyond L over 2 from the axis. Here, nothing goes beyond L over 2. Another one we, we will need is, uh, say, you have a disk. So if you, from the, this is the top view. From looking at the top, here is the axis. It's like a computer disk, a disk, and it's spinning like that way. So it has, so the masses are all distributed say uniformly and this radius r. So the top view uh, tells us there's a thickness down there that's kind of hiding. If you wanted to draw side view, you could see the thickness and the axis is coming out like that. So this is the side view. And sometimes we write like a top view. I, mean, I, I like both of them. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I use that. So, uh, so we know axis in the middle and nothing is more than radius r away, right? And this, in this axis, about this axis, axis to the center and perpendicular to it, so this axis say A, axis A, so about axis A is one half m r square. Uh, let, let me uh, show you one more thing that comes out like bicycle. Everything is, uh, if I take a bicycle wheel and spin it, so if I take a bicycle wheel and all the masses are at the rim. I know there are spokes down here and we can just ignore the spokes. Uh, and so the axis is here, coming out like that. and I'm, spinning it like that and this radius r because all the masses are here m1 you can break this up and you can see everyone just m r square so the i of this uh, this is disk but the ring is kind of not like this about axis a is m r square because everything is the uh, same distance away so each part is going to be, you can see it's made up of, if I made up M1, M2, M3, it's easy to understand. So if I broke it up into N parts, then each one of them, each one of them will have M1 R square. This one will give me M2 R square. This will give me M3 R square, etc. And then you can say R square is all common and all the M's, M1 plus M2 plus, so this is, that's why that becomes 
total MR square. Uh, there are other shapes that are uh, important, um, uh, like um, if I have a ball, a, a sphere, and if axis is through the center, now the axis can be any which direction because there is a symmetry in every direction, right? So, I of a sphere to uh, axis A, axis A, about axis A to the center, is um, is going to be two fifth m r square. This is r and m, and this factors two fifth, one half, one twelve. All those things are uh, sometimes difficult to compute. Requires calculus. Uh, many uh, many books have uh, a table of those values, those formulas. Uh, you can always search it in the Wikipedia. Uh, well. Um, we will uh, use this moment of inertia uh, to study the dynamics of rotational motion next. And before that, we do that, we want to learn one more concept called torque of a force. That's also like this thing, it depends on the axis. Okay, so see you in the next video.